a monstrous 2,000 watt power supply for this price? I mean, to be clear, $160 is a lot of money, but compared to a 2,000 watt power supply from a reputable brand like Silverstone, it not only costs a lot less, this is $550, but it weighs a lot less. Not to mention, who the heck is Senli Fang? What the heck is 95 plus gold? And why is there a Bitcoin logo on it? To find out if this can actually meet its rated specifications, yes, my friends, 2,000 watts, we are gonna be risking not one, not two, but $6,000 worth of the fastest gaming hardware money can buy. Are we gonna ruin something today? No, we're gonna tell you what our sponsor. Crucial. With Crucial's MX500 SSD, you can enjoy speedy system startups and lightning fast file loading. Plus, with their dynamic write acceleration, even the most demanding applications open faster than ever. Get yours today using the link down below. Everything about this product screams sketchy. From the obviously fake certification label to the spelling errors all over the warnings, I mean, or warnungs, as I should call them, and of course, uh, <clears throat> do not err move this cover. Train de service people only. Akushion! <laughs> to the fact that the supposed 2,000 watts of total output is achieved by adding together 1,600 watts, 150 watts, 6 watts, and 10 watts, which by my rough math comes to 1,766 watts. Not 2,000. <laughs> Obviously, the weight is not the be-all and end-all of a product's quality, but for power supplies, it can be an indicator because both quality components and cooling do add weight to the final product. And compared to our real 2,000 watt power supply, which comes in at 2.6 kilograms, <clears throat> our Selling Senlin Fang comes in at 1.6. There is a whopping kilo less electronics in this than that. I just want to come in here. I think this power supply is fine. Yeah. I think it's good. You think it's fine? I think it's fine. And here's why. Senli Fang only supports that level of output at 240 volt inputs. And compared to building a power supply that's designed to take a full range of input voltages, this is a lot less complicated. I do want to say that this warning is very valid. Hazardous voltages contained within this power supply, not user serviceable, return to the service center for repair. But we believe it is safe to open these because neither of them has been plugged into the wall in literally a year. We forgot about this video. It's been sitting on the shelf that whole time. You have life insurance, right? Uh, yes, actually. I have a, a wonderful life insurance policy. Please don't die though. I'll try not to. I mean, arguably today, I'm not doing a great job of that, but. No, oh, this is fine. Yeah, see if Alex says it's fine. Um, Officially, never do this. Oh my god. I've never cared that like a company used a cheap label before, but <laughs> really? really? <laughs> ah! Come on! What are you doing? It's not... Ah! Hey. Okay. Wow, that was on there really tight. Uh, DC brushless fan. Madel. Whoops. This is a really cool power supply. There's a lot of stuff in here. Well, there's sure a lot more stuff than I have. <laughs> there's so many transformers. They've got one, two, three, four, five. Don't touch these. Which ones they got? Jazz, Bumblebee? <laughs> I have a Maddell FD13525B12M, which according to my Google search is just completely not a thing. And you are rocking a Globe Fan RL4Z 140 millimeter fan. Yep. Has 1700 RPM. Oh, neat. It has actual specs. How nice for you. Why don't you talk us through what we're looking at here, Alex? I'm gonna take a couple guesses why our Chinese power supply is so much cheaper. So first of all, 120 volts just sucks. For the same amount of wattage that you're outputting, you just need so much more amperage. And then all of your components have to be beefier and stuff. You also need a whole big power factor correction circuit to go along with that. It only needs to switch up way more. Big pain. This doesn't have to deal with any of that but there isn't very much in there. <laughs> there really isn't. <laughs> Kyle, what are the main differences we're looking at here? You can see there's 
a lot more chunky boys over here. You can wait, okay, don't you can't call them chunky boys. <laughs> Probably transformers. Okay. Or inductors of some kind, but something that's got like lots of copper, lots of magnets and wrapped up and looks like it's got some potty material in it. This has one transformer and one and two inductors, but <laughs> you can see there's a ton more components that are a lot heavier, which is where your weight's coming in. Right. Plus there's this entire modular interface, which you plug into in the Silverstone. So that's probably where your weight differential is coming from. Obviously, as Alex mentioned, this can take both uh, North American power, so like 110, and you know, European and the rest of the world, you know, 240. Don't forget Japan. So there are bros. Oh, they do 110 as well? Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm sorry, Japan. <laughs> so because you have both circuits in here, obviously you're gonna have way more circuitry and without sure. getting into too much of the details, this doesn't have to worry about any of that. So there's less stuff. Tell me something. Yes. Have you heard of this capacitor brand, Nippon? No, that's a very good. That's a very good Japanese brand. Okay. Have you heard of Hoicom? No. But just because I haven't heard of it doesn't mean it's bad. But definitely good. Unknown. Do you see an EMI filter on the AC input on that one? Oh. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That might not be yeah. a problem for your power supply, but it could be a problem for other devices. Oh no! There it is. There. There it is. Never mind. I was wrong. Okay. So we're good. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I don't want to, I wouldn't go that far. Let's put it that way. Here's the summary. More capacitors, these are for the AC side. These are for the DC side, mean less V droop and in general, a higher quality unit. Our quality unit also has more transformers, some of which comes down to it being designed to take both 120 and 240 volt input, but some of which comes down to just transformers being made of metal and magnets, both of which cost money. Money that Senli Fang didn't want to spend. I just discovered something that's kind of interesting. Oh, tell me. After looking up that transformer, I found another review of a similar looking power supply. It's only 150 watts, but that doesn't really matter. But it seems very likely this is made by Great Wall, which is really kind of good. Wow, the layout is really close, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. This has beefier bits in some spots, like these are larger caps. But for the most part, it looks a lot like this great wall made power supply from 10 years With ago. That said, <laughs> just because it looks like a great wall power supply doesn't mean it wasn't cloned from a great wall power supply. True, yeah. Now we're looking for a MOV. Can you explain what a MOV is? A MOV is basically a resistor that changes its resistance based on the voltage going to it. So oh, okay. like if you were to have a voltage spike, it, it would, would basically act, it. no, it would basically act as a short, dumping oh. it to ground. So it'll kind of like level, it'll level off the spike. Oh. So you don't want voltage to spike. Spiking is very bad, right? So like, uh, it's just a style of tron uh, um, a voltage protection or like circuit protection. There's sure. other ways to do it. But it would have to probably be pretty close to the end. Usually it's then. a through hole looking like disky thingy. Um, you can probably show it on the Silverstone. Mm, yeah, this one says TVR. I think that's... Um, what about this boy? That could be it, 5D. Dash 15. Dash 15, yeah, boy. Yeah, and I think it's either DS. Oh, okay. I got it, NTC MOV. Um, yeah, it is a MOV. Okay. No. Is it? Hey, I found a thing. Yeah, you found a thing. This thing might not be a total piece of crap then. Oh, hey, here's another one. NTC 2. Yeah, I mean. I'm going by the uh, label yeah, on the yeah, PCB. Yeah, it's also actually touching the, uh, that looks like an inductor, so it could be. Oh, temperature, it could be, based yeah, on the temperature yeah. of the inductor. So yeah, and. Oh. Obviously, we're missing out on creature comforts, like the modular interface, but that shouldn't affect the performance of it. This thing may very well not totally suck. Maybe. It's probably fine. I'm almost disappointed. <laughs> I mean, there's still plenty of time for it to blow up, though. <laughs> Which is a perfect time to show you guys the system that we'll be using to stress test it. We've got a 12900KS that's modded with a copper IHS that'll pull anywhere between 350 to 400 watts at load. We've got an RTX 3090 Ti. This guy gets up in the neighborhood of 450 watts. And we have our shunt modded RTX 3090 that is capable of pulling up to seven 800 watts, depending on the load. That means altogether we could reach darn near 2,000 watts with all of these guys going full bore. Raising a pretty big question. What kind of outlet could we possibly power this with? The one for the router. No, no, no I, I know. I'm, I'm asking a hypothetical <laughs> question. 
Uh, that'll be a spot for the cut. With one of these. Now, before we start adapting this to this, we wanna make it very clear that you are never to do this because it can cause all kinds of confusion when at one end of a power cable, you've got something designed for 240 volt and at the other end, something designed to have 120 volt devices plugged into it. It's bad. Also, never modify your extension cables or work on these if you're not qualified or just do anything that we've done in this video so far. With all that said, here's how to do it. First step, we're going to put on a large yellow flag to indicate that this is the spicy power cord. Next, this end needs to go. It's good, 240 volt. Do you have a Safe. jerry rig everything knife? You need to cut it? It's fine, I'll get it back. No, I'm, I'm doing it. Next, we're just gonna strip this back a little bit so we can get access to the real wires. I've done this a couple of times before, but we've never filmed it, because just don't. Should probably use wire strippers for this, but I don't know where our proper sized one went. So we're just doing this. Total side note here, but Zach from Jerry Rig Everything had no idea how bad our knife situation was before he sent over some of his. This is literally our knife drawer. <laughs> Open the shop. Now we just need to look up which wire goes where into our new connector. The green one is almost certainly ground, but for the other two, there's gonna be a hot and a neutral, and we're 90% sure that our white, which is usually hot in Canada, is gonna go to Y, and our black one is gonna go to X for extreme, because black is like the color of performance. That's Y, right? I mean, W-H-Y. Y, that's Y, because black is performance, and X for extreme, extreme performance. What? I love bothering them. It's so much fun. Get, get Kyle over here. It's great. This is why we don't film videos. Just talk smack the whole day. <laughs> our, our meetings are great. I love talking about how he's been employed here for over a year and still hasn't shipped a product. I've almost been here two years. And you know why I haven't shipped a project? Is you change it every single time I'm ready to freaking ship it, mate. <laughs> Before he was hired, I almost had the screwdriver done. <laughs> Do you know why it's not here yet? <laughs> Yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is this black piece is keyed to only go on one way and we just screw this bad boy in here. Rant, rant, rant. Just a little something like that. Okay, and hey, where'd that back piece go that holds this in snug? Hey, look at that. Oh wow, that's gonna really clamp down on that. I mean, that's good. The last thing you wanna do is rip the cable out of the plug. This poor thing. Mushed. All right. I mean, it's definitely not coming out of there. Okay, ready? Huh? Uh, it won't fit in that plug. Yeah, yeah, no, we're gonna use this one. That's really bright now. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> There's a little light in here that's supposed to indicate if it has power or not, and it's like super bright. That's great. Uh, where'd our power supply go? We should wear eye protection when we plug this thing in. David's way back there using the zoom. Okay, David, come on. Go ahead and plug it in. Oh, okay. That's a... This is not the best cable yeah, I've ever that... seen. Look at this end of it. We should get a new cable. Okay, ready? Yeah, I told you it was fine. Okay. Let's hook it up with the PC. Hey, stop. <laughs> this 24 pin is so wimpy. <laughs> You guys didn't unplug it before you started to plug in, right? Um, yeah, just unplug it. It's off. I trust it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, hey, motherboard RGB's lit. Ah, oh, for like five uh, seconds while the caps die. Is there only one eight pin EPS? I mean, I guess if it's a like mining power supply, it's pretty focused on powering GPUs. Now the 3090 Ti is tons of fun because the single 16 pin connector that it uses takes three of these higher powered eight pin traditional PCIe connectors. We're not actually gonna connect the second 3090 for now. Are you ready? That's loud. The fan really goes. <laughs> wow. We don't even need to look up the specs of this fan. Under RPM, it would just say brr. This has been surprisingly uneventful so far, but then we are also only pulling probably like 50, 60 watts right now. 373 watts. 373 watts, not bad. <laughs> and it has not blown up even a little. Oh, 415 on the GPU. That 3090 Ti though, hey? 
absolute <laughs> beast. Let's just talk about worst case of what can happen. Everything dies. Now, I've seen stuff before where people are like, oh no, the power supply shut down when I use my 3090. That's fantastic. If your power supply shuts down, that's good. If that your means your overcurrent protection is A, present, and B, worked. I've seen some people be like, oh, this 500 watt power supply will run a 3080, no problem. It's like, no, it shouldn't. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing to be putting on Reddit. <laughs> I think it's time to add another GPU. Yeah. For those of you that didn't watch our shunt mod video, this GPU has a resistor on top of the resistors that measure how much power it's drawing. That means that the GPU thinks it's drawing like 300 watts or whatever, when it's actually drawing 600. That lets you overclock it a bunch, and in this situation allows us to destroy a power supply or something. Alex, we've got a bit of a problem. These cables aren't especially long. The thing is that copper, is expensive and cables are made of copper. So a lot of the time cheap power supplies will cheap out by running shorter cables. It also helps power supply manufacturers hit higher efficiency certifications because there's less loss whoop, from the long cables. Although these guys don't have any kind of real certification anyway, so that clearly wasn't a factor. I can't believe that across two GPUs, just two, we're gonna have a total of six eight pin PCIe power connectors here. Okay, we good? It's so loud. It's really loud. Feel the air, like from here. Oh wow, that's true, you really can. <laughs> PCIe has, device has been detected into blah, blah, blah. Oh shoot, okay. There's only so many PCIe lanes on the Z690 platform and it looks like our dual GPU configuration is interfering with the M.2 slot that we have our SSD in. Conveniently, this motherboard has one of these DIM.2 things from ASUS. So we're just gonna use that. Oh, our 3090 is not showing up. Wait. Oh. You know, oh, wait, what? Driver verify. You know what I think it is? In order to populate that slot, let's go manually change it to PCI M1 and PCIe 2. Okay. That didn't help. Hmm. They're both there! Yeah, it was um, it was something else getting this to work. Holy crap! Uh, so Anthony also lost an hour yesterday because he put a 3090 in a board after the 3090 Ti. Uh, turns out the hardware variables for literally every other NVIDIA GPU do not exist in the 3090 Ti drivers. So in order to get that fixed, we need to you know disable driver verification, change the INF file. And uh, Dan did a write-up on everything that you need to do right here. That's so stupid. Come on, NVIDIA, are you guys new? Let's make these things burn. We'll make them pay for what they did to us. Mostly you and Anthony and Dan. <laughs> yeah, Dan's comment was, I can't believe they shipped this. <laughs> <laughs> Show me some fur mark. Wait, does it hit both? No, GPU 2 is not doing anything. I just want my payoff for this video, darn it. The people need to know. New idea. We disable the 3090 Ti. Boop. See you later, buddy. Now we run Furmark. You are running on the 3090. Thank you. We are now drawing 760 watts. Okay. Now, device manager, <laughs> enable. Yeah, the 3090, it's only drawing like 400 now. Oh, a little more. 500. Huh. I'll settle for 500. Okay, now what will you run on? Nothing. You will crash. Please, I just want to hurt my GPU. I'm hitting both. 460 on the 3090 Ti. Of just shy of 500 on the 3090, plus the 300 on the CPU. What's that work out to? Closing in on 1300 watts. 1300 watts. It's definitely toasty. It's really toasty. Is it? You wanna feel the exhaust? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a goer. Oh, wow. The yeah. back of the board right here is hot. You touch that spot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what is on the other side of that? Here, what are we looking at? It's either our high voltage transformer or our high voltage MOSFETs. Probably the high voltage MOSFETs. 
Well, it's not the sort of thing I'd recommend buying for your gaming rig. It's loud and the chassis gets frighteningly hot under load, but it's a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's alive. I figured 170 bucks for a 2000 watt power supply. It would just immediately blow up, but it didn't. And it really is delivering 1300, probably more. We've got a lot of fans running up, probably closer to the 1400, 1500 watts right now. Yeah. GG, uh, the label fell off at some point. I don't even remember what they're called anymore. Uh. And GG, our sponsor. Vessi. Vessi footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, waterproof. Designed to keep you moving, Vessi released their new Everyday Move shoes. With enhanced breathability and added support, this style is perfect for the adventurous or those looking for something sportier. Featuring a pull tab to take them off and put them on with ease, vegan suede lace cages, extra midsole cushioning, and the same waterproof Dymatex technology that you love from Vessi, you'll want to wear these puppies everywhere. The dual climate and material keeps your feet warm during the winter and cool during the summer. Stay dry and get your Vessi shoes today at Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips and get $25 off using the code Linus Tech Tips at checkout. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy Alex and I cooling a PC with a gasoline powered pump. It was pretty stupid, but... Very stupid. Fun though, right? Oh yeah.